everyone, welcome back to another review, where today I'm going to show you what I think is one of the craziest COB lights that I have ever seen. The Colbar CL60. Now this is a 65 watt light, and you might be thinking, so what Dave? Okay, there's plenty of lights on the market with that sort of power output, right? But this thing is tiny. For reference, here it is compared to the rather popular Godox SL60. Now the SL60 weighs just over 1.6 kilos. The CL60 weighs just over 700 grams. It's almost 60% lighter despite having a metal exterior versus the plastic of the Godox. It's freaking tiny. Honestly, compared to the Godox, this feels like a kind of a, a toy 60 watt light that you'd give to your kids just to keep them occupied while you use the real grown up light. Now to clarify, I am not suggesting that this is a toy light, absolutely far from it. I'm in fact using one of these as my key light for this very video. Now the CL60 has a variable color temperature, which is great to see because my Godox SL60 is fixed. This has a range from 2700 up to 6500 Kelvin and has a CRI of 97. It also has an adaptable fan. You can choose between smart and quiet modes. Although there doesn't really seem to be much in the way of difference between them. And sadly, there doesn't seem to be a fully silent mode, which is a bit of a shame. Although the heat management on this is exceptional. I've been running this now pretty bright for quite a while. It's barely lukewarm. But then that's sort of not that much of a surprise given the fact that not only does it have a big heat sink around the light itself, it's got eight exhaust vents firing off in all directions for the fan and the entire thing is made of metal so it basically acts like one giant heat sink itself. Now it gets its power via a USB-C port rather than the more conventional three pin socket. Although while it's nice to see a Type-C port, you do have to question the ruggedness and is it going to last as long as a conventional 3-pin plug. Especially given the fact that when the light is angled down, you do have some strain there on the plug and the socket. Now controls for the light are done either via controls on the back, which of which there are two rocker switches, one for brightness and one for colour temperature. And the adjustments for these are quite clever. You can nudge the brightness rocker switch to get 1% increments all the way from 0 to 100%. If you turn and hold the rocker switch, then it jumps up in 10% increments. And if you push the rocker switch in, you get 25% leaps. And it is a similar story with the color temperature. You nudge the rocker switch, you get 50 Kelvin jumps. If you hold it, you get 100 Kelvin jumps. And if you press it down, it cycles between four preset color temperatures. There is then an effects menu, which has all the usual lighting effects, you know, like lightning and strobe and watching TV and whatnot else. And all of this can be done not just via the controls on the back, but also via the Colber Studio app. Now the app interface, fairly self-explanatory in terms of control. Although I did find that connecting my phone to the light in the first place was a little confusing. Although that might be because I think someone else had already connected their phone to this light beforehand. But what I ended up having to do was go into the light menu and tell it to reset the Bluetooth and then pair up my phone whilst the Bluetooth was resetting. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed there's a, a distinctive lack of a modifying mount. Never fear though, in the process of making this light so small, Colber have actually removed the common built-in Bowens mount and have instead put it as a clip-on plate. Now this plate is held in place by spring-loaded ball bearings, so despite it being a bit stiff to get on and to remove, it does mean that it is very secure and unlikely to fall off. And you then also get supplied a small Bowen's mount style reflector. But what exactly is the benefit of having the option of a removable Bowen's mount? Ah, well, this light has rails on opposing sides and mirrored gullies on the other. And what this allows you to do is actually mount more CL60s onto each other, which I thought was pretty insane. 
And this is not just being able to put, you know, a pair of lights together. You could put one on either side. You could put a square three by three. You could put nine in a line straight up if you wanted. Although, damn, that would be quite wobbly. You could put nine horizontal, you know, fit them on multiple light stands. Incidentally, the stand mount for these are removable, which allows you to pick and choose which lights have a mount and which don't. Having the removable light stand and gullies on top and bottom does also allow you to be able to hang the light from the ceiling whilst not actually having to turn the light upside down, which means all the controls will still remain the right way up. Although it is a shame that they didn't have another hole drilled through to allow you to angle the light at 90 degrees to the stand. All this sort of reminds me, again, of toys that I used to have as a kid. You know, where you'd have all the little trucks in the cars and then you'd interlock them all together and the next thing you know, you've got a giant robot. This sort of feels like that. Except this is just lots of smaller lights that you can stick together to end up with one giant light. And it's not quite as easy to pretend to fight bad guys or save the world with this. But it does open up many possibilities. You, know, you, you could take these and make a huge wall of lights when required, but then take them all apart and position them as independent lights as well. Although the thought of then going around and having to individually dial in the same settings on a dozen different lights probably would bring some people out in a cold sweat. Thankfully though, these lights have one last trick up their sleeve. You can set the lights to be either a transmitter or a receiver, and then you can put them into one of 15 different groups. Then whenever you make a, an adjustment to the settings on the transmitter light of any given group, all of the receivers in that group will instantly replicate those changes. Now, I have noticed that the effects don't seem to sync up, i.e. if you have the lightning effect and you put it on the transmitter, the other lights will display the, the same effect, but they won't do it in sync. So, all in all, I must say, this is one insane light. It is absolutely tiny, and yet it packs a hell of a punch and it is able to team up and form a gang. Unfortunately, I'm afraid at the time of me recording this though, I don't have any specific details on pricing. However, once this light has become available and I'm aware of the price, I will leave links to it and a note in the description down below. But well, that's gonna wrap up this video, I think. If you have any questions regarding the Colbar CL60, then please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.